Well, you see, as they're finishing the well, mm -hmm. they're going all the way down to hit basement, you know, the metamorphic rock down there. Mm -hmm. And they ran into this little nasty stuff called oil. Mm -hmm. And so Kinda they, dying. so the guy has to, on the rig has to call back up and say, oh, we've got some oil, which means you got to go back to all these people who have already in their mind saying, well, that didn't work. What you told me wasn't right. Saying, yeah, but we got oil. Yeah, but we got oil. Went down even farther, and right on top of basement, there's a quartzite that they're going to hit, which is metamorphic, and normally you're done. Mm -hmm. Well, it was fractured. It had oil. So they're going, hey, and we got more oil. Well, you're trying to shift the mindset of management, which has already dismissed this, that that didn't work out. It's a slow-moving, dumb but, dinosaur. But, but, <laughs> yeah, but you're going, you're pulling on, but, but we need to look at this. And the problem was they couldn't make that argument. Oh, so they man. walked away, the well sitting there, and the test data is there, and it was all held confidential up until about a year ago. Don't quote me on that. This but is roughly, exciting. Yeah, this so is like a movie. <laughs> it is. So Donkel Oil and Gas has a lease then, with the Stinson well and then buys up around it. So we've got 16,000 acres right on the north shore, literally of Anwar, with a well in it, and they tested the well. The first sand, the test wasn't good. Um, they had hole problems, but it was evaluated to have oil in it by the well log. The second uh, surface, the quartzite unconformity with fractures in it, flowed 300 to 400 barrels a day on the test. And the engineers came back and said, yes, but that hole had stuff in it. It's probably more like seven, 800 barrels a day. Now, that wasn't enough to capture ARCO management to get him to go back in. Mm -hmm. But for us, we're going, there's oil flowing out of a hole in the ground, and it's sitting there, and all we have to do is go back to it. So there's a perfect example of all the information's there. All of it's there. All you have to do is put it together. Now we had um, um, new maps on it and the new idea. Now the other thing, which is a little weird, because everybody here who's an oil man, you use the word quartzite and start talking oil. It's like granite or something. They're mm -hmm. going like, yeah, okay, this should be a real good story. Keep talking mm -hmm. because normally that's not your reservoir, mm -hmm. like sandstones. Well, I'm from the Midwest, Iowa boy. Show um, me. I'm from Missouri. Show me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you have a great neighbor. It's called Iowa. <laughs> Anyways, um, and so you know that in there, the aquifers are coming from the deeper sands. They're sitting right on top of, go figure. Precambrian quartzite. More and to the story. Yeah, that's it. So the Mount Simon sandstone is the same idea. So you say, well, we get water out of it. It covers the whole state, Illinois, Minnesota, Iowa, the Missouri. And you say, well, so how does this work in this situation? Well, you have the Stinson wall. You have this quartzite. It's Precambrian, just like in the Midwest, Sioux quartzite is uh, Precambrian. Okay, it's sitting out, exposed to the surface, rain, wearing it away, weathering the top of it. It's going to be your hillsides, you know, your river valleys. Well, quartzite's made out of quartz. It's sand. You're only going to get quartz sand and gravels in your rivers and stuff and your surface. Mm -hmm. So the top of this formation, exposed for 10 million years easy, tens of millions, maybe 100 million years, weathering away, laying all this quartz, sand, and gravel onto the surface, much like in the Midwest. Then the oceans come back. When the ocean comes back in, the first thing comes back in is the beach. You've been to Pensacola, mm -hmm. very nice, beautiful quartz sand laid out. Well, you just keep pushing that beach up, let's say into Mississippi, you lay out this beautiful, now I'm going to use geology speak, it's called a transgressive marine sand, which just means you're moving the beach and just laying this nice sand layer right on land. And it's sitting on the surface. So what we picture for this is an, what's called an unconformity. You have the quartzite, which is precambrian. It's all weathered. It's already fractured. It's weathered. It's got oil in it. Mm -hmm. And so it had this worn surface and deposits on it. And then you lay this beach sand over the top of it kind of a thing. And then you bury it all. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect reservoir because all the oil comes up through the fractures and then moves along. And that's the, that's the area that tested 
300, 400, which they said, no, it's probably more like seven to 800. This is like an exciting Alaska story. This it's is an like exciting a Alaska. Story for the kids. <laughs> yes, and that's what we're trying to do, what we need to do. And, you know, so right now. So what's the status now? Status right now is the leases are there. Uh, the prospect, you know, we have the information. We um, the history have an is there. The history is there. We've had an engineering report that we have. Right now, we have another engineer. There's a um, special tool which they run. It's a, basically a camera, and it literally reads the inside of the wellboard, looks at it, and um, we have a um, analysis being done right now that is looking at the nature of these fractures and trying to see how big they are and get an idea of how much flow they could just feed in directly. Um, when a fracture is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, the oil flows along it in this case. So how has NAEP helped you? Um, what we're very pleased is, you know, this is only the first day and the first morning. We've been busy. I have yet to have lunch. Oh. And it is uh, 1.30. And, um, but that's a good thing. We've had people come in, what about Alaska, what about Alaska, and they've never been to Alaska. Um, they're getting quickly educated on Alaska. Um, the amount of acreage available, the amount of wells with bypass left beyond. Yes, and they're looking at it as uh, mid-continent type oil men saying, oh my God. It's all there for us, it's ready all to there. go. It's all there. The pregame is done. It is. It's time it's, for the game. It's time for the step on up. And the state of Alaska is, um, in my opinion, going to be very welcoming to um, new investors coming in. And so we've been um, very busy explaining Great. North Slope, Cook Inlet, taxes. Well, it's works. a good thing we're having this conversation today because the dills that you make means the fields might go pretty quick and I guess I can just say see you on the field. Yes, it'll be great. I enjoyed this <laughs> Thank so much. You. It's so great to see you today.